Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Transformers Studios Series 69 Devastator. Now the reasoning behind why you are seeing the packaging in a slightly unusual area for a review is because the box on this particular piece is enormous, almost the same size if not bigger than that of the Titan class Scorponok. Now the main reasoning behind why I'm actually going to be reviewing and unboxing this particular set is because there has been so much speculation surrounding this particular piece on whether or not it will have different paint applications or whether or not it will include different accessories compared to the regular release of the individual constructor cons. So in today's review I'm going to be giving you not only a in-depth review of the actual Devastator that we do get within this box set but I'll also be giving you a direct comparison between the individual constructor cons as well as the combined form of Devastator to that of the original releases. So starting off here firstly by taking a look at the packaging you can see that we have a fantastic piece of artwork there of the Studio Series Devastator. I do believe that this was one of the first teaser images that we got roughly two years ago and unfortunately the final product didn't really look anything like this but nonetheless in terms of packaging art I think that it looks beautiful you can see that we have got the number 69 there I do know that many collectors are rather frustrated with this actually being a numbered entry into the studio series as for those of you who have already picked up the previously released individual constructor cons and are out to complete the studio series line you will indeed have to double dip on this particular set in order to complete the numbers but nonetheless we do have the devastated text there as we take a look here at the underneath of the packaging, we do have an image of the combined form next to the included backdrop. If I just flip the packaging all the way around as it is absolutely enormous, you can see here that on the back of the packaging, we have a really nice piece of artwork there of the Studio Series Devastator, as well as the individual constructor cons scattered around it. And judging here by this particular CGI render, the paint applications, especially there on the head sculpt, do indeed look different than compared to what we got on the original release. Just flipping it once again, back over so that I can give you some measurements for those of you who are mint in box collectors. I'll just very quickly bring out the measuring tape. You can see here that this is roughly 29 and a half inches in terms of its overall whip. So for sure, it is a massive box. As stated earlier on, I was actually really surprised to see how huge this particular box was. As initially, I did believe it was going to be a lot more compact, just giving you one last look at how the top of the packaging looks. You can see that we do have the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen logo there with a headshot of all of the individual constructor cons. So without further ado, let's crack this box open and see what awaits us inside. So I personally am going to come in from this particular angle and just snip this section there. And then of course this piece, and hopefully that should allow this entire section to rise up fold out the flaps. Now I do believe that one of these pieces of card is indeed the included diorama so I will take my time whilst actually removing this. Slide this section out. So by the looks of things the first section that we do get is Mixmaster in his combined form. So you can see there we've got the main figure as well as some of the additional components that being from Overload, Mixmaster and from Skipjack. So just set that there off to the side. It's quite nice to see that this does come pre-assembled already in the combined form. So all you really need to do is just combine the figures. And then the final clamshell that we do get is that of the rest of the constructor cons. Once again, all completely transformed up into their combined form. So really, as soon as you take this figure out the packaging, all you've got to do is just assemble the limbs together and Devastator will already be assembled. You can see we do indeed get some different paint applications here for long haul. However, of course, I will go into more detail once we get into the more traditional review area. Just setting that there off to the side and seeing what else awaits us. We do indeed get two instruction manuals. So you can see that we do have two different ones here. I believe that this one here is for the individual constructor cons. Or perhaps they are exactly the same. I do believe they are exactly the same. However, one of them is in a different language than compared to this one. So just set that there off to the side. You can see that it showcases how to transform all of the constructor cons and then of course how to combine them into Devastator. So really awesome looking artwork here and the instructions do look incredibly detailed. And then the final thing to take out of the packaging would be the backdrop. So let's just slide this section here out and the backdrop does actually come on a separate piece of card. Just slide this section all the way out remove this piece 
And you can see that it is indeed the same backdrop that we have gotten with all of the individually released Constructor Cons, however this time a lot larger in order to actually scale with the completed combined mode Devastator. So there was the unboxing here for the Studio Series 69 Devastator. With this segment now completely wrapped up, I'll take the figures out of the packaging, assemble Devastator and get on to the review and the comparisons. And so here we have Devastator fully combined into his Gestalt and I have got to say that despite me being rather harsh on this particular release, the enhancements to the paint applications for sure do make this the better version when comparing this particular combined form to that of the mass release version. Now whilst the changes in paint applications may be very subtle, I can for sure tell you that especially where the head sculpt is concerned, it looks remarkably better. Now before we take a detailed look at Devastator first, I first of all wanted to show you how the new included backdrop does actually scale with the figure so you can see I have got it propped behind him. It is rather difficult to convey on camera due to how massive this piece is, but unfortunately Devastator here is a little bigger than even his backdrop, so they haven't necessarily made this backdrop 100% to scale with the figure, which is rather unfortunate as in the packaging, I believe there is more than enough room for them to have drastically increased the scale of this, but nonetheless it's still a really nice looking diorama, and you can even see just from this positioning that if you were to take some photos of this particular figure, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to get some phenomenal action figure photography. And so now with that out of the way, I'm going to be breaking the individual components of Devastator down and giving you a close side-by-side -side comparison with that of the original version. We'll then very quickly show a full shot of both this version combined as well as the retail release combined and compare them. Then we'll go into the robot mode and of course finally we'll wrap up with the vehicle mode. So without further ado, Devastator transform! And so starting the comparisons off here firstly by taking a look at what is in my opinion the figure that has the most changes in terms of the paint applications. Here we have Mixmaster. Now the paint applications in the combined mode especially are drastically different. If I just bring them in here for a closer look, you can see that we just have so much more paint application going on here for our new box set version. You can see that we've got some really nice looking gold and white paint applications, especially around where the eyes are concerned and you can see some really nice golden here, which in my opinion really does help to excel the sculpt and bring out some of the sharper details as well. As we take a look at it here from a side-on perspective, once again, I'm a massive fan of the paint apps that we now do have on this newer version than compared to what we got on the older version and you can also also see that we do have some nice gold paint apps there for where the mouse section would be. As we take a look at them from a top perspective, you can once again see some new paint apps such as this black section in the middle of Devastator's head than compared to just the red that we got on the standard release. And we also do have some really nice golden paint apps there as well. In terms of the mixing drum, they are more or less exactly the same other than the fact that this version once again does have some gold paint apps and it is mainly just where this area is concerned. The rest of the paint applications are exactly the same and the same can be said for the rest of the figure as well. So other than the mixing drum and of course the rest of the body, the paint applications of Mixmaster, at least in the combined form, are exactly the same. So once again, I really do believe it's probably down to your own personal preference on whether or not you do believe that the changes in the paint applications do worth double dipping and picking up this box set version. In my personal opinion, I will be displaying the box set as the Devastator combined mode and will be displaying the standard releases as their individual constructor cons, as I really do believe that Hasbro's goal with this particular set was to make the actual Devastator combined mode look as accurate as possible. This almost to me reminds me of back in the day when we used to get the Takara Tomy repaints and they used to be a lot better in terms of their paint applications than compared to the Hasbro versions and just very quickly opening Devastator's mouth so that we can see some of the changes done to the paint applications there for the teeth you can see that once again very similar the back row of teeth are still silver whereas this time around the front row are indeed golden whereas on the original release it was all silver and you can also see that we do have some nice silver paint applications actually inside the mouth as well you can see some nice golden and silver there whereas on the original release it was just a standard molded in black plastic. So in terms of a comparison out of the two here, I for sure believe that the new box set version wins in terms of Mixmaster's head mode. Moving on now to the comparison here between Scrapper. For the most part, these figures here are identical in terms of their paint applications. This entire top assembly is exactly the same. You can see that we have no additional paint apps there on the side of the vehicle. If anything, they have used a slightly lighter shade of silver on these particular sections than compared to the more darker gunmetal silver that we did get on the original version. The only major drastic difference with this newer version is that they have painted some silver detailing here actually on the fingertips of Scrapper whereas here on the original version it was just a standard yellow. I'm quite unsure as to what they were trying to give the impression of with this
this particular paint application as unlike Longhaul who has a paint application which resembles sand I really am unsure as to what this is supposed to resemble perhaps wear and tear from where Devastators has combined of course in the movie he does use this as his fist to actually help aid him moving along the ground so I guess that is what they were trying to give the illusion of but personally for me I don't necessarily think that the paint apps on this particular figure worth warrant double dipping at least where this release are concerned you can see that it is merely just the silver paint application there it would have been nice if we could have got some nice sand detailing or perhaps a really nice black wash on some of these hydraulic sections so in terms of a comparison here really and truly there isn't nothing that special to write home about turning here now to the scrap metal comparison quite honestly I do believe that this figure here is probably the main reason why many collectors are indeed going to be picking this up I have spoken to several collectors who have stated that they will be picking this box set up merely for scrap metal and actually selling on the rest of the Constructicons as scrap metal on the aftermarket has now become one of the most sought after Constructicons of all time and I'm really unsure as to why as quite honestly whilst he is a nice figure I don't believe that he is as good as some of the other Constructicons but nonetheless in terms of paint applications it is very similar to that of Scrapper the only real difference is in terms of the actual fingertips you can see that as we turn here to the underside we do once again have a darker silver wash here to give you the illusion that perhaps Devastator's fingers are indeed battle damaged and once again whilst it is a nice welcomed addition I personally don't believe that it is the best that they could have done I once again would have loved a slightly more sandier texture similarly to what we will get with long haul once I do the comparison but in all it's a really nice looking figure and as stated if you are just after this particular release this is probably the best bet you're going to get in order to actually pick him up and then of course you can subsequently sell on the rest of the constructor cons but in terms of paint applications there really isn't that much of a difference it's merely just the fingertips have been painted on this newer version whereas on the older release they weren't turning here to the high tower comparison unfortunately high tower here is one of the few figures in this set which has had no changes done to his paint applications whatsoever there is literally no differences between these two releases whatsoever other than the fact that once again they have appeared to use a slightly lighter shade of silver where this section is concerned than as opposed to the more gun metal that we got on the previous version but there are no additional applications so we don't get no scuffage to the actual treads nor to the thumb section we don't have any new components to this piece I think that this would have been a great opportunity for them to have included some ropes or some wires to actually attach to this or even had included some of the missile pods I really do believe that lack of accessories are this box set's biggest downfall as once again I really do believe they could have beaten DNA design at their own game but nonetheless you can see that in terms of the paint apps they are more or less exactly the same there really isn't no differences with these particular releases whatsoever turning our attention here now to the leader class figures here we have the leader class scavenger and at least here in the combined form once again there has been no major paint application changes whatsoever this is a very similar situation to what we saw on Hightower in the sense that they have literally added no new paint apps which is rather unfortunate as once again I really wish they could have either had included some accessories such as the missile pods here for the shoulders or if they would have included some nice paint applications here you can see that in terms of when comparing them it is once again a very similar case they appear to have just used a slightly lighter shade of silver here for the wheels and then as I turn them around here to the back you can once again see that slightly lighter shade of silver here with this particular release than compared to here with the standard version but there are no changes in the paint applications here for the combined mode whatsoever which I really do believe is unfortunate it would have been nice if perhaps they could have added some here for this whole upper section or if they could have painted some of the wiring detailing once again another slight letdown and is a real missed opportunity especially where the lack of accessories are concerned and so taking a look here at the most recent Constructicon to be released here we have the box set version compared to here next to the standard release and much like we saw with scavenger slash demolisher there really isn't any changes with this particular release whatsoever which I really do think is unfortunate I think that Hasbro should have gone out of their way to at least have made one change on each of the constructor cons just to make them slightly different when compared to that of their original counterparts but you can see that even the shade of silver that they have used I believe is more or less identical with anything the newer version here being slightly more vibrant than compared to this older version but really it's incredibly subtle you can see that all of the railings here are once again completely painted so nothing new here in terms of the combined mode for overload and so now taking a look here at the Voyager class long haul thankfully there are actually some differences in terms of the paint deco mainly in terms of the battle damage or the wear and tear that we do have here for long haul's foot you can see that this here has been given a much more sandy texture and really to me does look as if though Devastator has been trampling through the deserts of Egypt you can see that I believe that, that has come out really nicely on this particular release and you can see that as we turn it here to even the opposite side that same level of paint application does indeed retain and I am actually glad that they did add this as of course as this is the base 
place of Devastator's foot. It is probably the area in which would get the most muddy and the most dirty. So I really do believe that that is a nice attention to detail. And you can see that just when comparing the two of them, it for sure to me definitely helps to make this figure stand out a lot better. The shade of green that they have also used seems to be a little lighter here for the box set version than compared to the more darker shade that we did indeed get here for the original version. And something also worth mentioning is that I'm not entirely sure as to whether or not it was a QC issue on my copy, but I had a very floppy ratchet joint on my original release, whereas on this box set version, they have indeed rectified that. So you can see that it does not rattle around nowhere near as much as what we got here with this version. So it is great to see them actually refine the tolerances if that was a issue on all of the limbs here for long haul. And now for the final combined mode comparison, here we have Voyager Skipjack. And unfortunately, Skipjack has fallen to a very similar fate when compared to some of the other Constructicons in being that he hasn't really had all that much changes done to him. The only real difference I can see is that we have got some slightly dirtier paint applications here just for this piece alone. So none on this piece of plastic or none on this support structure. It is very similar when compared to here next to the original version. And considering they made long haul's foot so dirty, I'm really unsure as to why they didn't utilize the same paint application on this particular figure. I think it would have been great to have got these treads here in a slightly more muddier and dirtier paint application. But nonetheless, I guess it is what it is. And it will be up to the collector's or the purchaser's decision on whether or not they believe that the different changes that we do get with this release worth warrant double dipping. And here for a fully combined Devastator size comparison, we have here on the left, the standard release. And of course, here on the right, the new Studio Series box set version. Now, upon first glance, you probably won't be able to notice all that much difference in terms of both the molding and of course the paint applications. And that is because the molding on both of these figures is exactly the same. As stated when I did my side-by-side -side comparisons of the individual limbs, unfortunately Hasbro and Takara have really not packaged anything brand new with this particular set. We don't get any new components. I really do believe this is a major missed opportunity as they could have potentially beaten DNA design at their own game and could have included some upgrade components to this in order to make it worth collectors double dipping. I would have loved it if they could have added some extra facial components or if they would have found a way to have added the missile pods on the sides. Just subtle changes like that I really do think could have made this potentially the best. But you can see that when standing them side by side, the real changes that you are probably only going to notice are the difference in the paint applications in terms of the face sculpt. So you can see that the new box set version, in my opinion, is a lot more accurate in terms of its paint scheme to what we saw in the movie. And I also do believe that it looks slightly more visually appealing than compared to what we got with the standard release. You can also see that we do have a golden highlight there on the top of where the mixing drum is, whereas that is missing here on the standard version. As we take a look here at the fingers, you can see that Scrapper does have some dirt on the fingers, whereas on the standard release, we did not get that. And the same can also be said here for Scrap Metal. We do have some dirt on the base section of Skipjack, and we have loads and loads of dirt and dust paint applications here for Long Haul, whereas it is completely missing here with the standard release. Personally, for me, I believe that if you were to look for one figure to display as the combined form, definitely go with this particular box set version and perhaps have the individual constructor cons be the standard release, as I think that the changes in terms of the paint applications really does greatly excel the look of Devastator. Whilst I don't believe that the actual dust on Long Haul looks all that great when we get him into his individual robot mode, here for the foot, I think it works perfectly. And the same can also be said for the dirt there on the fingers and of course the extra paint applications that we do get there for the head. But that is just your very quick Devastator side-by-side -side comparison. So without further ado, let's move into the robot mode comparisons. Kicking things off here with the robot mode comparisons, we have here on the right the new box set version compared here next to the standard release. And once again, unfortunately, it does appear as if though there are no new paint applications with this particular box set release, just bringing them in here for a closer look. For the most part, the entire robot mode is completely untouched. I did believe that perhaps they were going to add a little more amount of silver here on the head, but you can see that when comparing them, they are exactly the same as one another. Once again, the only real way to tell them apart from one another in robot mode is from this golden highlight that we have here for the top. I maybe would have liked it if they could have perhaps weathered up this section on this newer version, or perhaps had added some silver paint application here to the fingers, or perhaps here to the toes. But nonetheless, Mixed Master is for sure a really nice figure. And if you don't have one already or haven't picked up any of the Constructor Cons, I for sure do believe that this set here will probably be more worth picking up than if you already own them. Turning here to a long haul comparison, we have here once again on the right, the new version, and here on the left, the older release. And the only real area of difference with this particular version is that here on the side panels of long haul's arm, we of course have the carryover of the weathered dust effect that we saw in the combined mode. Personally for me, I think that out of the two, I'm probably going to stick with this one as being the long haul that I display on the shelf, as I think that these figures were really intended, especially the actual box set versions, to be displayed as their combined mode. As of course, this was not a look that we saw in the movie on long haul whatsoever. So personally for me, whilst it is a nice added touch for the combined mode, I for sure think that it looks rather unusual here for long haul's robot mode. But other than that, the paint apps 
straps for the head, torso and legs are all identical. Comparing both versions here of Skipjack, once again, unfortunately, there are no real differences in terms of the overall paint scheme. I would have loved it if they could have added a darker wash here to Skipjack's body or if they could have added some mud to the actual treads, but the figure itself is actually really nice. Something which I have noticed a difference with is that they have now reversed this engine block piece so that it now matches what we saw on some of the promotional images of this figure. I do believe that there was an issue with Rampage and on my particular version of Skipjack where this piece here was reversed and I do believe that this here is the proper configuration so that is awesome that they have finally rectified that but really and truly there are no differences on this figure whatsoever other than we have some dust effect here on this back part of the arm so really another nice figure but I would have loved it if they could have added a darker wash. Comparing both versions here of Overload once again there are no changes with this particular figure whatsoever so in both combined mode robot mode and vehicle mode the figure is exactly the same as what we got with the standard release so I won't be showing you a vehicle mode comparison as quite honestly there is nothing new to show whatsoever but Overload still once again is a really nice looking figure and for those of you who didn't pick him up first time round and have now found him to be rather difficult to pick up this box set here will for sure be your second chance. Turning our attention here to the Deluxe Class figures, other than the fact that Scrap Metal does have some battle damage here on the underside of his fingers, he once again, similarly to the rest of his Constructicon brothers, is exactly the same when compared to here next to the original release. The only difference that I can tell is that they have used a slightly lighter shade of silver here on these particular pieces, but other than that, the figure is exactly the same. So if you were unable to pick up the first release, I really do believe that this figure here will be a really nice addition, and as stated earlier on in the review, is probably the reasoning behind why most collectors are indeed going to be picking this box set up. And then finally, the final three Constructicons that we do have, once again, as stated throughout the majority of this review, are more or less untouched, other than the fact that with Scrapper here, he does have some battle damage to the actual soles of his feet, but Demolisher slash Scavenger and Hightower are exactly the same figures as what we got as part of the standard release. So you really aren't getting anything new with these particular releases in terms of their paint applications, nor in their accessories. I will once again not be showing Scavenger and Hightower in their vehicle modes as there is no paint difference whatsoever. Comparing both versions of Mixmaster to one another, you can see that once again, as per tradition, it would seem with these Constructicons, the difference in paint applications is very minimal. The only area of which is different on the newer releases that we do have some golden highlights there, which are just a carryover from that of the combined mode face sculpt other than that the paint apps here are more or less identical i really have got to say however though that i do think that the paint apps on this particular mix master release on both versions are perhaps some of the cleanest that we have ever seen especially where the stripe around this entire section is concerned i really do believe that hasbro have done a really nice job actually painting this particular release up but without further ado let's move on to the next constructor con very quickly comparing here scrapper in his vehicle mode once again very similarly to the combined mode there are no changes whatsoever here in the vehicle mode other than the fact that we do have some silver paint applications actually underneath the base of this particular region but other than that no new paint apps whatsoever so once again it is more or less exactly the same when compared to it next to the standard version and so some final thoughts here for the Transformers Studio Series 69 Devastator gift set personally for me if you already own the Constructor Cons and are not all that fussed about the new paint applications that only certain figures do have then this set for sure can be a major miss I really do believe that once again this is a major missed opportunity on Hasbro's part as they could have for sure sold a lot more of these pieces if they would have made drastic differences in terms of the paint applications for all of the figures not just for a few whilst the enhances to mix master and long haul greatly in my opinion amplify the look of the devastator combined mode there really isn't no changes in terms of the robot modes and that can really be said for the rest of the constructor cons as well and in terms of vehicle mode it is once again really unchanged i wish that they would have included some accessories i really do believe that if they would have included perhaps a larger vortex grinder or some tubes or perhaps the missile pods that collectors would have gone mad for this particular set but for collectors and general fans who have picked up none of the constructor cons over the past two years i for sure believe that this is the perfect box set to pick up all of them in one go so that you don't have to go hunting for them unfortunately here in the uk at least this set does retail for a lot more than what it would be if you were to pick up the constructor cons at their own individual retail price so if you are a uk collector and are looking into actually picking this set up i would highly recommend that perhaps you source them elsewhere perhaps on ebay or through other online retailers 
I don't necessarily believe that going out and picking up this whole box set would necessarily be the right decision to do straight away. I do know, however, that Scrap Metal has skyrocketed in terms of his aftermarket price. However, having said that, for those of you who are in other parts of the world where this is significantly cheaper than what we have it here in the UK for and is probably more in keeping as what it would be if you were to buy them individually, then I highly recommend that you pick this set up. Once again, especially if you don't have any of the Constructicons. For those of you who are a completionist and want to pick up every single numbered release, you're going to have to pick this figure up either way. Or perhaps you could sell off some of the Constructicons once you have it. I'm really unsure as to what else to say on that particular topic. So some final thoughts here for this particular release. In terms of an actual Devastator Gestalt, I do believe that the Devastator itself looks better than compared to the standard version, but the individual Constructicons themselves are no different. So I really do hope that you enjoyed my comparison review. If you did, please do let me know down in the comment section below. If you have any questions regarding this particular set, please do not hesitate to contact me down in the comments and I will for sure try my best to answer any questions that you have. I thank you all for watching and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.